Hello and welcome. This is Andrew, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about making candles in Unity. And you may be thinking, Andrew, why are you going to talk to us about making candles? Well, because I think candles are very important because they serve a multi-purpose. Obviously, they're a lighting source. They can add a bit of liveliness to your scene, and they're pretty easy to make. And in this video, I'm going to show you two different ways of making both an in-engine candle using a cylinder, as well as making a candle using a custom mesh for some people that are a little bit more artistically inclined. However, we're first going to be taking a look at the really basic candle that we're going to be using a cylinder for. And we're going to need three textures for this. So you're going to need something like Photoshop to make these in, or if you do some clever Google searching, you may be able to get them there as well. But let's go ahead and let's hop into Photoshop. And the first thing I'm going to be making here is a simple square texture that's going to have a gradient on it. And now you can have this gradient go from black to white or just use any two colors that you would like. Then you'll need more or less a glowy circle with a transparent background. All I did for this was naturally I created a circle then added a pretty big outer glow to it. And finally we're going to need something for the flame. So we need something that's kind of a vague flame shape. I just used the pen tool and created this simple shape. It doesn't have to be anything too crazy but also make sure this is on a transparent background as well. And that about does it for all the assets that we're actually going to be needing for this candle. All right, and with that, let's go ahead and look at an actual in-engine implementation of this. And we're going to be starting with a very simple version of the candle, where we're going to be using an in-engine cylinder instead of an actual custom mesh. And we're doing this because if you're working on a project and you just want to get something quick and simple into your project without having to actually model anything, this, this one's for you. So I've already actually set up a really basic candle here where we have a root object that's completely zeroed out in terms of its position, its rotation, the scale. We have a point light that is, could be any settings you really have if you want baked shadows or real time, as well as the color. You can either, well, actually I would recommend using a point light. And then for the mesh itself, this is the important bit where we just have a cylinder and you can do that by right clicking in your hierarchy, go into 3D object and then cylinder. The only difference I've done is I've gone ahead and I've taken the mesh collider off of it, or more specifically the capsule collider. I've raised it up from the ground by 0.1 so it's not going through the ground seeing as that the pivot point is in the center of it. And then I've scaled it to 0.1 across the board. And one reason for using this root object is that we can actually have it all zeroed out and it will sit flush with the floor, which is really nice when needing to position it. So we have our point light, our mesh. And now let's go on to the actual wick. And as of right now, this is just a simple root object for both of our sprites that we have, where it's slightly above our cylinder, also scaled down a little bit to accommodate the size of our sprites. And then we have two sprite renderers where we have our flame, which doesn't have a sprite right now. We'll, we'll go over that in just a bit, where the transform's all zeroed out, and we just have a sprite render attached to that. Pretty much the exact same for our glow. And I'll talk a little bit about the settings for this in just a little bit. So let's go and let's start some implementation. I've already gone ahead and, and imported all of, our, all of our textures. So we have our flame, our glow, and our gradient. Our gradient is just imported as a simple texture, nothing fancy about it. But for our flame and our glow, they're imported as sprites. And one thing that you may need to check or adjust the scale for is the pixels per unit. And that sort of dictates how big it's going to be within the scene. Now, if you want to do it predominantly through scale within the scene, you're more than welcome to do that, but this will do some of the lifting for you. So you don't have to make it a really, really small scale within your scene. And that applies for our glow as well. All right, I think that about covers that. Let's go ahead and make a folder for our material that we're going to be using our gradient for. So let's make a material. Let's name this M underscore simple candle. All right, and let's just go ahead and attach it before I forget. And our primary thing that we're going to be using here is this emission. So if we click that, it'll bring up this extra color box. Let's go to our textures and we'll just drag our gradient in there. And we're already sort of getting this sort of bloom effect on it. And what we can do is we can first, before we actually set the color of this, we can set the actual color of our candle. And we may want to use something, you may want to play around with this to see what you like more. I think I'll go with a darker color, just like that. And then we'll go to our actual emission color. And we'll make this a pretty bright yellow. And then you can actually bump it up even more by dragging on this current brightness. And this will actually give it a bit of an HDR effect right up here at the top. 
So if we just bump that up a little bit more, that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and exit out of that. And that pretty much does it for our cylinder. One reason that I don't recommend using the cylinder, but it can still be used in some situations, is that the UVs aren't very good. So it's gonna have this weird effect, or it's gonna have this weird artifact on top of it for the UV mapping, which is okay if you're kind of in a rush. But anyway, let's go ahead and look at our wick, specifically our flame, and let's go ahead and drag our sprite into there. Just like that. And one reason that I wanted to import these all as white is that we can have a better control over them in engine with the color. So we can go through here and we can maybe adjust this to maybe an orange or a very light yellow, which is a or no, more light orange. I think we'll do that. All right, and that about does it for that. And then for our glow, we'll do the same thing. And for the glow, I may recommend playing with the alpha as well but we'll make this more of a brownie orange. And then one thing you also will wanna do is change the order in the layer. So if it's zero, it's gonna be overlapping our candle a little bit. So if you make it negative one, it'll make sure it sits behind it. All right, and that about does it for the basics. One, or two things actually that I added onto this was an animator that enlarged the wick, which is pretty simple. So, if you wanted to do that really quick, I usually add an animator at the root component. And then we can go ahead and go to our animation tab. We can click on our, we'll use our whole wick object and we'll create an animation clip. And we'll just write glow for right now. And this is gonna be really simple just, as, just for a quick explanation. And we'll go ahead and start recording. And we can go ahead and just go 30 seconds down. We'll enlarge it a little bit. We'll copy that first frame and we'll go back to our first one. And there you go. Pretty, it'll just enlarge just like that. And then in your animation, you just want to make sure you, it's on loop time. So there you go. That was pretty simple. And one final thing you may want to do is actually attaching a script to the flame here to create a billboarding effect so it always looks at the player. I'm gonna go ahead and put up a very simple script on screen right now that's gonna show you what that would look like. It's pretty simple. It just uses a transform.look app, and that about does it for that. All right, and that about does it for the simple candle. Let's go ahead and look at the more advanced one. And for the advanced candle, I started with using a custom mesh that I created in 3ds Max. It's pretty much just a cylinder that I kind of malformed a little bit to make it look a little bit more sort of candle-like. And I also added a mesh for the wick. And then my process includes UVing and texture painting that mesh in 3D coat. If you're interested in seeing this process a little bit more in depth, feel free to leave a comment below and I may make a series about it. But that's all we're really gonna need. In addition to the images that we created earlier, we're gonna need that custom mesh as well as the albedo texture or the diffuse that we are creating here in 3D coat. And I'm gonna go ahead and export that and import it into Unity. All right, so now let's get along with this custom candle. I've already set up the basics where I have the custom mesh that I've made that I've already imported into our scene. I've set up the glow sprite on a wick sub object that I've created, which is just another mesh for the little wick here. And I've set up our point light. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create a material for this candle. It's gonna be pretty similar, but also kind of worth showing and explaining. So let's go ahead and right click and we'll create a new material. And we'll just call this M underscore custom candle, just like that. And I've already imported my texture as well. So we're gonna go ahead and drag that into our albedo and then we'll just go ahead and apply our candle. We're gonna bump our smoothness down a little bit. And as of right now, it doesn't have any glowing properties to it. So we have to enable that emission again. And for this, we're just gonna drag in our albedo again. And then we're just gonna bump this value down. And this may depend upon what, what kind of texture you have or the saturation of it. So we'll just go ahead and go about 0 0.6, maybe even lower than that. Oh no, that looks pretty good. Well, that's actually, I'm indecisive. Let's put it to 0 0.5. That looks pretty good. And one of the differences between this candle and the basic one that we just created is that this one's gonna have an actual particle effect. And it's gonna be really simple. And it's gonna be under our wick sub object. So if we go under here, let's go ahead and just create an empty object. And we'll just call this 
flame and we'll attach a particle system to it. Just like that and it's already going crazy so let's go ahead and stop that. And for this particle effect we're also going to need to create a material. So we're just going to go ahead and create another material for that for our flame. And we'll just call this M underscore flame. We're going to go to our different shaders. We're going to go down to particle and we'll just use the simple additive one. And then for our texture, we're just going to drag in our little flame guy. There he is down there. And let's just go back to our particle system. Scroll down a little bit and we'll just apply our material. And there we go. And this is pretty simple. It's just going to be emitting from an edge and it's going to be emitting straight up. And a lot of the settings from there, you can adjust on your own. And before I forget, we're going to go ahead and raise up our particle system to, I think, maybe a 0 0.2. That looks pretty good. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to change some of these generic settings we have here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the start lifetime to 1 and we're going to change the start piece, <laughs> the start speed to 0. And then we're going to slow the emission rate a little bit and just cut it in half to 5. And then we're going to scroll down here to our shape. And right now it's a cone. It's actually kind of it's quite large. So we're going to go ahead and change it from a cone to an edge. And then we're going to make that edge radius 0 0.01. And then we're going to rotate it 90 degrees so it's going straight up. And if we zoom in here, you can see that there's this little line right there. And that's where our particles are going to be emitted from. And then we're going to enable velocity over lifetime. And we're going to change it from 0 to 0 0.01. And this is going to give us direct control for just making sure that it goes straight up from its initial position. And let's actually go ahead and play this. Oh, we also have to, I think our material didn't take for whatever reason. So let's collapse some of this stuff. Let's go to our renderer. And let's go ahead and try to drag that flame onto it again. Oh, there we go. Okay, well, it looks looks pretty big and we're also going to need to change the color over its lifetime. So let's just go ahead and close the render. Let's go to color over lifetime. And this is something that you can play with where you may want it to enter completely transparent and leave completely transparent. So we can add a little dot here right in the middle. We'll set its location to 50% and for the edges, we're going to change the alpha to zero. So it's going to fade in and then it'll fade out towards the end of its lifetime. All right, so we need to handle the size of this particle. So I think that's gonna be under our emission, or well not our emission, our, our main thing here, for our start size. And we're gonna change our start size to 0 0.05. And I think we're actually gonna to have to move our flame up a little bit more. So let's just do 2.5. All right, and there we go. And that about does it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or anything like that, just feel free to leave a comment below and I'll see you next time.